Hey guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today I want to showcase three of my favorite tier 9 tech tree medium tanks and tell you which one is the best choice for you. Let's go. These three tanks are the Centurion 7-1, the Leopard PTA and the AMX-30. Those tanks belong to the best tier in World of Tanks. They are all tier 9 tanks. They are medium tanks, so they are very flexible because they combine mobility with firepower. This is why they are so strong and overall fun to play. Besides this, they all have their unique niche. In this video, I want to show you the differences between all three tanks, how I think they should be played and tell you which tank is the overall best one for you. So let's go. Okay, first game in the Centurion 7-1. We are spawning on El Aluf and let's first of all take a look at the map and see what options we have. Spawning on El Aluf with the Centurion 7-1, there's basically one thing you should do and you should go to this flank. Not only is this position, the let's say the strategic position of the map, which you want to win for your team in order to win the game, this is also a position where you can play Hull Down and exploit the strength of the Centurion 7 1. Alright, that is exactly where we want to play. Now, I recently made a video about the Centurion 7 1. If you want to know all about the strength and also the weaknesses about this tank, then feel free to check it out. It is linked right here. Now, first of all, I have to say that. Tier 9 is for me the best tier if you want to play top tier because most of the time you are in such a matchmaking, you are top tier and you play against multiple tier 8 uh, tanks. Now sometimes you are in a tier or you are matched against uh, at least some tier 10 tanks, however due to the fact that for example the Centurion does have the top tier gun, the tier 10 gun, it doesn't feel as if you are uh, top tier. So that is a, a strength of tier 9 and um, all in all you are either same tier, it feels as if you are either same tier or you uh, can act as a true top tier tank like in this scenario. Alright, so uh, let's focus on the game. So um, as I said multiple times with the Centurion 7-1 you want to play Hull Down, you want to find a place which lets you play Hull Down and then you want to exploit the strength of this tank which is the phenomenal turret armor and the okay hull armor, frontal hull armor, if you use your 10 degrees of gun depression. So this is how this tank works. On the downside of this tank, you get a gun which has almost no snapshot capabilities um, due to the bad dispersion values. Here we go, nice. Um, and also you have um, inferior spotting capabilities, so you cannot play the vision game against other medium tanks in the game, and that is the drawback of this tank. However, if you manage to exploit the strength, which is hull down gameplay, then this is the tank which you want to play. You get 268mm of penetration of the standard ammunition, plus you get hash as premium ammunition, which has a reduced alpha of 210mm only, however, in in uh, sorry, a uh, uh, penetration value of 210, however, an increased alpha damage of 480 compared to 390. So. I'm not the biggest fan of those HE or Hash shells, um, simply because they are not as reliable as the other shells. However, um, on tier 9, and once again I repeat myself, you will find yourself most often in a tier 8 battle or against tier 8 tanks. This is not too much of a problem um, compared to, for example, tier 10 tanks, which are always in a tier 10 battle. Alright, so... We made 1100 damage and now our team is advancing and so sooner or later we will have to uh, help out those two tanks so that they do not get taken out. On Overlord, uh, sorry, on uh, El Aluf, I'm kind of hesitant to go into the ditch too early simply because you can get pushed out and there's no escape once you have uh, fallen down into this little ditch. So that's what I do not like to do. So let us try to cover those tanks. Maybe the other tanks are super aggressive. And let's now try to cover them. Maybe the Type 57 will peek out of cover. And then we can take a shot. Let's see how it goes. 
Looks like our team is on the winning side, 5-2-3, so sooner or later we will have to catch up and have to also make damage. Yeah, this thing is playing super cautiously. Centurion 1 is making pressure, maybe that's what we should do, but this thing is advancing, let's take a shot. Okay, yeah, object, object, um, 7 five two is making pressure so we can get multiple free shots and another one into the rear and can this tank get taken out hopefully before killing the centurion seven one nice okay perfect all right two thousand three hundred damage and now it is time to hurry up and to make more damage and to trade our hp go oh, nice shot into the side of the turret i can fall back so that he has no chance of taking one shot in return and now uh, let's fully aim in. With the Centurion 7 1, you should always aim in your shots at least a little bit because, once again, this tank does not have any snapshot capabilities. All in all, I think it is a. And now, you know what? Yeah, let's, lay, let's load hash because that is a, uh, a. an easy penetration for the hash shell. So. Um. In my opinion, yes, you can use hash, but you should not rely on hash simply because it is less reliable, just like the standard HE shell. So only use hash if it really makes sense and if you can be absolutely sure to penetrate the other tank, because otherwise it, ju it just uh, simply doesn't make sense. So 3,300 damage. Now, of course, I want to be the first one arriving at the, at the position of the remaining tanks however i do not want to expose myself and get taken out easily so instead i want to flank down maybe there's the uh, kpz still down at the close to the position where the patent tank is located let's see so here you go there is the lynx nice and yeah you should try to fully aim in your shots, at least to aim in as much as possible. There uh, you go, nice. And let's track him, nice. And we get, uh, yeah, nice, exactly. That's what I wanted to see, a bit of tracking damage. And now we can simply YOLO in, um, just because we still have so much AP, HP remaining. Okay, I'm loading another HE shell. Because I want to do more damage. Hopefully there is the possibility of making more damage. I should be the fastest tank arriving in this position and you know what due to the fact that there is also the pattern tank I want to load another regular shell but as he is showing the rear of his tank to me I want to now load the, another hash shell so I'm very much um, thinking about what shell I can use and I only want to use hash if I can really be sure to penetrate the other tank so basically if I take if I take a shot onto the rear of the tank for example all right perfect so 4.6k damage um 4. Point, was it 4.9 can combined i think this was an excellent scenario for the centurion 71 a tank which you want to play hull down and if you play this tank hull down then you can be oh so aggressively and that is the strength of this tank all right now let's compare the leopard pta to the centurion 71 but first of all let's take a look at the map and see what options we have Spawning on Stutzjanki with the Leopard PTA, in my opinion, the best option is to go down here. This is the, the strategic position still, after, even after the rework of the map, that you want to win with your team. Plus, there are a couple of bushes that you can use here, here, or maybe here, in order to get a first shot and then fall back into cover. I would not recommend to play here, simply because you want to play in a hull down tank, um, which is not the case for the Leopard PTA, so in my opinion you should go down here and help your team to win this portion of the map. Okay, yeah, so we want to go to the left hand side for sure, now we are spawning in a tier 10 matchup with the Leopard PTA, so a worse situation compared to the game with the Centurion 7-1. Now the Leopard PTA is uh, most people consider this tank as being a sniper and uh, yeah to a certain degree this is true however in my opinion the centurion 71 is uh, an is as good in, when it comes to sniping as the leopard pta both tanks have relatively precise guns 
However, both tanks have a bit lackluster dispersion. And so both tanks lack the, the snapshot capability of other tanks. Um, for example, um, American tanks, which are in general pretty good at uh, conducting snapshots. Now, the Leopard PDA has 420 Alpha compared to 390. However, this is not too much of a difference, if you ask me. The biggest problem of the Leopard PTA and of all those tanks is that this tank lacks armor. It has no armor whatsoever and it is even susceptible to enemy tanks, sorry, which uh, use HE shells. So what you want to do with this tank is you want to conduct second line, ga second line gameplay. You cannot brawl against other tanks like in the Centurion 7-1. So even if you would uh, try to play Hull Down, there's there's no benefit for you because um, even your turret can be penetrated easily by other tanks because once again you have no armor whatsoever. Oh and by the way notice how you do not have gun depression all around your tank because of the rear of the tank which is a little bit elevated so you really only get I think you even I think you um, you do not even get a bit of, uh, of uh, negative gun depression if you will. Uh, over the rear of the tank. Anyway, so in the Centurion, Sef uh, sorry, in the Leopard PTA, you have to analyze the minimap more than in the Centurion 7-1. If you have support in the Centurion 7-1, you can basically brawl against other tanks in a hull down position and then hold a flank. And in the Leopard PTA, simply because of the fact that you have to conduct second line gameplay, you have to focus. Uh, you have to keep analyzing the minimap and assess constantly assess the the situation. So that is exactly what we want to do here. We want to position ourselves behind other forces. We do not want to be in the first line of the engagement, and we want to simply add the firepower of our tank. Now, on the good th the good thing about this tank is it's uh, slightly better mobility. The power to weight ratio is actually not better, but the top speed is better. And so you can more easily change flanks with the Leopard PTA and later on also with the with the uh, Leopard 1. And so this is the strength of this tank. Now besides this, you can of course also play the vision game in this tank. Because your view range and your camo value um, combined is better compared to the Centurion uh, 7-1. The Centurion has a good view range, however the camo value is lackluster. And so playing the vision games is an option in the Leopard PTA, but it is not in the Centurion 7-1. So in this game, we simply want to be fully aimed in when we take our shots. Another, this is also important on the Leopard PTA, as I just mentioned. And then we want to add the firepower of this tank to the fight. That's what we want to do. We want to preserve our HP, just like in any other tank, just like in the Centurion 7-1. However, Compared to this tank, compared to the Centurion 7-1, we cannot rely on our armor at all, and so we have to play much more cautiously at the beginning of the game. And I think this is the this is kind of the basics that you have to think of if you play tanks like the Leopard PTA, like those medium tanks which have a precise gun, which have good firepower, but which lack armor. For example, um, other tanks are the Leo tier 7 Swedish tank, this thing also has no armor whatsoever and it's it, it can also simply rely on playing vision games and on smart gameplay and on adding the firepower to the fight. So yeah. Um and there's no there's no problem with retreating in your tank. The only thing you need to make sure is you need to kind of be engaged um with second line gameplay and you need to bring your firepower to the fight. Here you go, another 431 damage. Nice, we're spotted, but we can fall back into cover, so it's not a problem at all. And then the solution for, for such a tank is, yes, you at the beginning of the game, you have to play cautiously and you have to retreat and conduct second line gameplay and always um, assess the minimap. But then at a certain period of time in the game, you can play more aggressively and you can bring your HP into the fight. The biggest mistake players do in a tank which has no armor whatsoever is they keep their HP until the end of the game. And if the game is over, they are still full HP. And that is, in my opinion, something which is wrong. Because you can play more aggressively 
at the end of the game if you have your HP available to do so because there's there's no other tank which has 1700 alpha damage I mean apart from the FV4005 for example but you can even play aggressively against a tank like the Yak Tiger or the 6DP even if you have enough HP speaking of the Yak Tiger let's um move forward so that we can take him under fire let's see no he's behind cover and you know what we can simply try to push him out of course um we need some assistance from our team but if you take a look at the minimap you see that all the tanks have been spotted and they were on the other side of the map so chances are that this yak tiger is isolated this is what the mx 1390 has also discovered and so, of course, we can now push him out. And if he takes a shot onto us, that's no, not a problem whatsoever. Because we still have 1,700 HP to trade. Unfortunately, he's taken under fire by our team. And there's not much we can do. Okay, only 151 damage. We were a bit late recognizing this situation. But maybe there's uh, more damage to come. The game is still relatively close. And now the only thing we want to do is we want to make pressure as much as we can because we want to do more damage and we want to consciously trade the remaining HP of our tank. So in a tank which has armor, you can basically start trading, start consciously trading your HP at the beginning of the game. In a tank like the Leopard PT-1, uh, sorry, the Leopard PT-1, the Leopard PTA, where you have no armor whatsoever, you have to play more cautiously and only at the end of the game you can uh, start to consciously trade your HP if there is only if you're only fighting against one tank, maybe against two tanks, but not against multiple tanks. Okay, so let's uh, wait until the MX thirteen ninety has um, <coughs> has spotted the remaining tanks. Nice, there's the gorilla. I could have loaded HE, but. You know what? This tank will be taken out so quickly that I want to make a shot and now he's okay here we go nice and another damage 444 of course 420 alpha damage is super nice because you can build up damage so quickly in the leopard pta that's ex that is excellent and all of a sudden we increased our damage to 2800 with this tank so let's see if we can get more damage we still have our full hp remaining so we can of course make hardcore pressure and simply drive into the enemy base and once again we're on the late side because the amx 3090 which is a good is this player is doing a good job and he's already yeah taken out the e50 so we simply have to keep pressing the w key and keep driving forward now i want to load he simply because i am trying to get a shot onto the adversary artillery Batchet Arty is trying to escape. Unfortunately, unfortunately uh, we only can actually no damage whatsoever on this tank, but maybe on this tank. Hopefully the enemy team is not faster and we can take them out. Okay, perfect. 3.2k damage and I think um, in this game you could really see the difference of the playstyle of those two tanks. So one tank is um, able to play aggressively in a hold on situation. However, it cannot play the vision game. The other tank is a more of a defensive tank, which can be played aggressively only at the at the end of the game. And now there's one tank, in my opinion, which combines the strength of those of, of these two tanks, and which is overall therefore the more flexible tank on tier nine. And this tank is the AMX. 30 um so let's first of all take a look at the map and see what options we have on this map spawning on prokorovka with the amx 30 this is how the game usually develops and in my opinion there's two options you can go to the middle and try to spot and uh, get one or another shot onto the adversary tanks here however what you can also do and that is kind of my preferred gameplay is you can also go to this position try to outspot those tanks Try to get crossfire to the middle onto those heavy tanks and once you've managed to win this portion of the map then you can exploit this situation and then move into the adversary base create map control and then take out the remaining tanks which are hiding in these bushes right here 
Yes, yeah, so that is where we want to go. Once again, we are playing as a top tier tank. This happens uh, multiple times, or most often if you're playing tier 9. This is why I like this tier so much. Now, um, how can you get the AMX 30? So the AMX 30 is a collector's tank. So you have to go to store and then select vehicles and then go to collector's tanks. And that is where you can get this tank. So in order to get the AMX 30, you have to unlock a tier nine tech tree tank out of the French tech tree. And then you can basically purchase this tank. You have to purchase it and then also unlock all those uh, equipment uh, all the equipment of this tank and that is how you can get this tank into your garage okay yeah so let's now proceed to the left hand side and um, let's see whether we can get some more shots some more crossfire into the middle now very important to notice is the only light tank in in the in the adversary team is playing on the other side of the map and so as the MX-30 has an excellent camo value, this tank is one of the best spotters when it comes to medium tanks on tier 9. And so you can really play vision games with this tanks in excellent strength. But this tank is even better in playing vision games than the Leopard PTA. So if you ask me an insane strength of this tank, this tank has an ultra strong DPM, so it can really out DPM almost every other tank on the battlefield. Another excellent strength. Besides this, this tank is super mobile. It has a very high top speed and a superb power to weight ratio, so an excellent mobility. The only drawback of this tank is, when it comes to mobility, is the poor tank traverse speed, but that is it. Other than that, the tank is super fast and super mobile. Now, the gun is less precise than the one of the Centurion 7.1 and also the one of the Leopard PDA. However, that is just a drawback that you have to take. And so, all in all, in my opinion, this tank combines the strength of both tanks. Of course, the armor profile of the AMX is not as strong as the one on the uh, Centurion 7.1. However, the, the turret does have quite some armor and here and there you will certainly bounce a shot on the mx30 plus the the upper hull of this tank is angled in such a way that you will even bounce shots if your adversary tanks simply use auto aim to um, and try to penetrate your your upper hull and so all in all in my opinion this is the strongest tank of all those three tanks it has a tier 10 gun it has an excellent mobility it has a bit of armor which is quite surprisingly nice and good and it has an outrageous dpm and it can play the spotting game so once again i can really recommend this tank and it is certainly due to all those strength one of my favorite tanks on tier 9 so let's take a shot onto this tank here go nice we can take him out and um, yeah this is the excellent position because not only can we um, take those tanks under fire but we can also play the vision game once again because the here we go. Yeah, that was a bit unfortunate um, because we can outspot the other medium tanks on top of the hill simply because we are the tank with the best spotting ability apart from the light tank which is on the other side, which is uh, now already taken out of the game. Okay, so it's now time to make pressure. So there are only three TDs which have not been spotted yet. Most likely they are positioned at the K2 position. And so chances are that we can make pressure. And that's what we want to do. So let's use our mobility. Let's first of all go here in order to once again spot the, the IS-6. Oh, there is the T28. Nice. And if we fall back into cover, then... Oh, here you go. There's the standard B. So it looks like we cannot take a shot onto the... Onto the standard B. He is engaged in a fight with the other tanks, with the Leopard PTA and the M103. And so it is now time to push out the... Here you go. Let's take one shot onto him. Nice. It's now time to take out the Leopard PTA... 
Nice. Then a bee has already been taken out. Then we'll get another shot onto the... Yeah, go. This tank is exposing himself. And so we can simply make use of our fantastic DPM. And let's first concentrate on the T28. Okay, this shot bounced. Uh, unfortunate. Maybe onto the Su-101. Nice. Another 406 damage. Okay, there are multiple tanks in this position. Super strange. However, that is good for us. And... Oh, nice, we can take them out. So, yeah, with this insane DPM, that's how easy you can pick up damage in the AMX. It is so easy. Um, the penetration value is a bit lackluster compared to the Leopard PDA and to the Centurion 7-1. However, it compensates this with superb DPM. And honestly, in a tier 9 tank, if you're facing tier 8 opponents, you actually do not need 268 plus millimeters of penetration you can perfectly work with this slightly reduced and i would say standard penetration value okay perfect so 4000 damage in the mx and now i can show you what mobility is able to achieve because all those tanks have been taken out and now it is our time to spot the remaining tanks which are in the k2 or k3 position and so we want to use our our high speed in order to arrive there first and to outspot all those tanks that's how we want to make more assisting damage. Unfortunately, the M4Y has been spotted, but you know what? We simply want to hurry up because it is our time here. Okay, where? how can I not spot this tank? Okay, already dead. And let's go there and let's see. Can we get another shot onto this tank? Maybe if he peeks out of cover, which he does. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the ugly side of the unprecise gun of the MX-30. However, this happens. Okay, he takes a shot onto me, but I still have my HP, so no problem whatsoever. And... Um, let me see. Hmm. Let me see. I think I should really hurry up and drive into the adversary base. Let's take a bit of an extra way. Oh, nice. This snapshot actually hit. hit, And uh, I think we spotted the Progetto 46. Nice. And we get all the sweet assisting damage. Nice. Excellent. That's what we want to do. And yeah, that is what the, what the mobility of the tank lets you do at the end of the game. You can be the tank collecting all the sweet assisting damage in this tank. Simply because you can be the first one arriving in the respective position. Plus, you, oh, that was unfortunate. Due to the fact that you are a good spotter. Uh, no. Okay, due to, due to, sorry, due to the fact that you are a good spotter, you can then outspot the other tanks. So let's see whether we can get another shot onto this tank. And bam, another 363 damage. And now let's... Drive around and let's try to spot the Su-130 PM. We can just YOLO in because we have 659 remaining HP. And so we could be the first one spotting this tank. Alright. Compared to the Centurion 7-1 and the Leopard PTA, this tank does not have a good penetration value on the HE shell. But that is no problem whatsoever. So yeah. 7.1k combined. I think a decent result. And in my opinion... You should really try to get this tank. It is one of the best tier 9 medium tanks in the game, if not the best one. And I can really recommend to play this tank. Alright guys, that was it for today with the video about my three favorite tier 9 tech tree medium tanks. What do you think about these tanks? Do you have these tanks in your garage? Did you get the Amex 30? And if so, do you like it? Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. This really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you find this video extremely helpful, then feel free to support me via Super Thanks. This way you can make a one-time donation. You just have to click this button underneath the video. If you adore this channel and you want to consistently support me, then consider subscribing to my channel or become a member once again with the click of a button underneath the video. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time in another World of Tanks video.